Hello, I'm Colin Moss. I'm making this video for the Cruise Lecturers Association to assist cruise directors to work out a bit about the story behind who I am and what I'm offering to add to the information that's on the website. I've been a management consultant for 30 years, working with staff from all levels of organisations, from the boardroom to this factory floor, in all kinds of industries. And one of the things I've realised is how important it is just to communicate in a relaxed and open manner and to carry people along with what it is that you're trying to discuss with them. I've also been a youth leader for most of the last 30 years as well, working with parties of a variety of ages, helping young people to develop skills with training, with personal development, mentoring, and also taking them on trips abroad and various other places and organising excursions and parties there, all to achieve particular objectives or just to see interesting places. There are three areas that I think might be of interest to cruise passengers. The first one is as a result of some work that I've done for consumer websites, I've been involved in a number of these from the very early days of the internet, helping people to, first of all, to avoid falling into the traps of various scammers. But secondly, when people have fallen into these traps, helping them to find the most appropriate way to get out of the problems that they've got into. Because my background is in IT, I also have helped people to avoid online scams, rogue websites, and this has developed also into helping people to, to manage and handle the increasing number of aggregating, aggravating phone calls to help them to work out what to do, what's genuine and what's not. Whether looking at these scams is one talk in a workshop basis or a more structured talk, whether it's even just one talk or two or possibly even three workshop discussion type exercises looking at different areas of, of what scammers are trying to do to part us in our hard-earned money, the more information people have and the more accessible that information is, the better protected people can be. Anyone can fall prey to these things. I've even helped university professors to address some of the problems that they've come across. It's just having the information and the confidence to deal with it. The second thing is that my hobby is taking photographs and increasingly taking video. However, when you've taken these photographs or video, and increasingly these are being taken on very small, lightweight cameras from the major manufacturers and even more now on smartphones, when you've got that, what do you do with it? You can't just pass the video around, you can't just pass the phone around to look at the two or three pictures. You want to do something a little bit more constructive with it, but equally you don't want to bore friends, family, workmate to bits. So there must be something you can do that is set up in such a way that it allows you to take best advantage of what you've got to be interesting, informative, a piece of fun, but without being tedious and repetitive. So knowing the basic rules of selecting pictures and video clips, of the minimal editing that you can get away with, which is always best, and setting it up then so that you can share those pictures, that video clip, that story with friends and family in a sensible way is always a very, very good idea. I regularly find myself chatting to people in cafes or wherever when we're on holiday and suggesting different ways of doing things. This would be a, a very useful way to, to fill an hour or so of a cruise passenger's time so that when they come back from the next excursion, 
with all those pictures, all those video clips. They've got something that they know they can do with it rather than just treasure them on the memory card that they've got. The, first, the third thing that I would be suggesting is that I have helped large numbers of people over the years to understand what the internet can and cannot do for them. Now to some extent this ties back to the security thing at the start and people have got very afraid, I've discovered, of the kinds of scare stories there are about scammers and rogue websites and not opening emails you don't know etc. So a bit of common sense is required, but at the same time, facilities like Tumblr, which allow people to research their own interests, but with other people who have those same interests, to look at the, what they're doing, to read the articles they're reading, to look at the photographs they're taking, um, and to contribute whatever they can, does very rapidly give people the opportunity to explore their interest in knitting, Byzantine architecture, uh, the architecture of the medieval churches or whatever. Similarly, with things like Facebook, people get very scared of Facebook and so they should because if the privacy settings aren't done correctly, you can end up exposing information that you really do not want in the public domain. But equally, you do want to be able to see pictures of the children, the grandchildren in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, or just the other end of the county you live in, just to keep, a, you know, to keep informed of what's happening and to be able to make the appropriate parental or grandparently comments or whatever, as well as put up some of your own pictures, but carefully set up so that only the right people see it and the appropriate information is used. And what is Twitter? Well, Twitter is an opportunity to find out what uh, Robin Fry has had for, uh, so it's what Stephen Fry has had for his breakfast, if that's what you want. But if you follow things like National Geographic or the newspaper of choice that you have, you can very quickly see trending information, you can find out what's happening in the topics that are of interest to you. And the beauty of Twitter is, if it's not of interest, you just don't use it. There are so many other tools out there on the internet which come and go, and particularly I'm noticing people dis suddenly discovering video conferencing on a personal basis, whether it's using Skype or whether it's using Apple's FaceTime. The ability to very quickly have a chat, to see the people you're chatting to, to look out the window of their apartment in New Zealand or wherever and see what's happening, to see the grandkids growing up, to, to swap some silly stories with them. All these things available free if set up properly. None of these things are scary. But what often happens is people are scared to explore in case they break something. So with a common sense approach, the opportunity to let people find out a little bit about what is out there, some basic guidelines and a little bit of assistance to help people do things would allow cruise passengers to, to set up their own accounts on the, the various sites on the internet that they think are of interest to them, but with the knowledge to be protected from those people out there who are doing things that you don't want to know about and don't want to get involved in. Overall, I think that, that I've got a number of areas of expertise which should be of interest to people, and I hope that some of the cruise directors will find some way of fitting me into their schedule. Thank you very much.